Good morning. Right now we are going live. So maybe we can start. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, thank you so much everyone for being here. And um, we are really excited to have your participation in this event. This is like a really special moment for the pop movement. And really, I really, we really appreciate your attendance and participation. I am Vanessa Hernandez, Pop Youth Mentor of the Pop Movement. And I want to give you a quick reminder. This session is being recorded and live streamed on YouTube. If you have any issues with this, please let us know. Welcome everyone to this session, Youth Leadership for Climate Action, the Pop Movement. It's important to remark that the Pop Movement was selected to be part of the Pre-COP 26 and Youth for Climate, Climate 2021 Driving Ambition Program. This has been an amazing accomplishment and a big congratulations to the Pop Movement. This session aims to showcase the climate action projects led by the Pop Youth Leaders worldwide, who are developing and finding solutions to climate change challenges. Also, this is a space for capacity building in young leaders that are seeking to take actions for the benefit of their communities and in turn transmit the knowledge acquired. We will have a lot of surprises during this event. We have special guests, young leaders around the world that will discuss and share solutions for global matters such as youth on decision making, accelerating climate action, key items for climate political negotiations, transition to a sustainable development, climate ambition, and net zero program. I would like to present Dr. Norma Munoz, Honorary Distinguished Mentor for the Pop Movement, who will guide us through all this event today. Welcome, Dr. Norma. Thank you so much for making us the honor to be here. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Good morning to all of you. It's a pleasure for us to be today with you in this event that will serve as a youth-led climate action platform. And we will hear the voices of the young leaders worldwide from different countries such as Nigeria, Venezuela, Pakistan, Mexico, Colombia, India, the United States, and South Korea. We will have some participants since the age of 15 years old and a little more than 30. And we have somebody there. <laughs> Thank you so much for to be here. And uh, my remark is, at this moment, if you have any question during the event, please, you can uh, send it to the drop it in the chat. We will take all your questions for the final uh, moment to answer some of the, the questions. And now, without more introduction, I would like to uh, call Dr. Ash Pachori, that is our pop senior mentor, to give us his message for this opening. Thank you so much, doctor, please. Thank you so much and a uh, very warm welcome to all of you. I just want to, I don't want to take too much time, but I do want to say a few things. Uh, first off, just how delighted we are to be together with um, the pop family today. Um, it is indeed a very special time. Uh, frankly, I mean, I know uh, this is a, a, a pre-COP event, which is focused on youth and youth voices. Uh, we're very, very honored to have this opportunity and thank um, the Youth for Climate organizers, um, you know, to, to give us this incredible platform. Uh, it is one that is, uh, is important where we get to amplify our voices. I am going to say to you, though, Amplifying our voices every single day um, is crucial. And today is one more moment uh, of culmination where we come together because we have a number of young leaders here who, who take action every single day of their lives. Um, but yet, as we get together today and every single time we have the good fortune of doing that, we celebrate. We celebrate you. And I, I do want to say... Um, that the reality is that you know we've seen with with the, the latest IPCC, uh, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's um, sixth assessment report, that we're we're in what is called code red. It's it's a it's a it's a, 
it's a starker message than ever before. And the point is that we're at a point in historically where we're at a tipping point way faster than was even anticipated based on previous assessments and projections. So um, all I want to say is that, you know, where we're looking at extreme uh, and intense weather events, we're looking at the melting of the, the Arctic and the glaciers, we're looking at the, the disappearance of the Amazon and, and the forests, all of these, um, you know, with the path we're on, while we have technologies that are emerging, many new ideas and innovation, we want all of that to happen. What I want to say is that with the path we're on, we're actually way, way beyond the 1.5 degree mark. We're actually on a 2.9 degree mark at the rate we're going. So I just want to say that your effort and your action is um, absolutely quintessential. It's not only key, it is super time sensitive. Um, and I don't wanna paint a picture which is all doom and gloom. I think that what is important to understand that we still do have a window of opportunity. Uh, what has emerged very clearly from, um, from, from the science that we've been able to access through this sixth assessment report is that window of opportunity is shrinking very rapidly as well. But I'm gonna ask you, please um, continue to uh, push on, amplify your voices and take action. And I just wanna say that one of uh, our, uh, you know, and when I say our, I mean all of us because we're, we're one unit and one family. The important thing is that the, the our existence is um, about coming together. It's about taking action and it's about the potential and the power uh, that youth bring to the world to bring change. And I know many of you would have heard me say this before, but I'm gonna say it again, that um, if we think back on historically, it's been when young people, just like each one of you and your beautiful, beautiful hearts and brilliant minds have come together to take action. And yes, we're at a point which is dire. It is code red. It is about our um, opportunity, which is, which is rapidly vanishing, but there is opportunity and you are that opportunity. So today we have, um, a brilliant opportunity once more to come together. Um, oh, I'd like to thank the entire Bob family, each one of you for making today happen, for making every day happen. Uh, but as we come together today, we'll amplify our voices, we'll share that action um, that each one of us is leading on the ground and we'll come together in stronger resolve to protect our planet. And I wanna say with every single one of these great blessings that we have to spend uh, this time together and to inspire each other based on science and based on knowledge and based on the genuine um, sense of goodness and spirit of being a universal family will be what will push us to the other side Yes, we'll have to adapt. Yes, we'll have to take action to mitigate as well. Um, but that's what we are here for. And I'm, I have no doubt that you will not only secure uh, the future of each one of us here and us as a unit, but many, many generations to come. And uh, with that, I'd like to congratulate you, each one of you for being the beautiful light, the beautiful love, the beautiful souls that you are. Um, I believe in you. Uh, I know um, I know all of you uh, have the greatest blessing to offer um, this effort to protect our planet. So go out and do all that you do um, and be your best and do so with, with a love, that love and light you have. And thank you very much once again for this incredible time we have together today. Uh, let's continue our celebrations. And um, my heartiest congratulations to each one of you. I know we'll have an opportunity to, to, to wish each other as we close today's session. But I just want to say that I, 
um, I think of you and I congratulate you. And today is one more moment for me to do that. So thank you all ever so much. And to every one of you who've been so key to making today and every day that's such a great blessing happened. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ash, for your very, very important message and your very urgent call for action that I'm sure that our pub family will take really like uh, should be because we are facing a huge problem now with the report of the IPCC regarding how the situation of the climate change uh, is uh, a big problem now that we are facing. Then thank you so much for reminding us every moment of your life that we need to act and we need to work and we are still having just, uh, I, I think, not a, a, very, a very small window of opportunity, but we will make it really big to, to take action. Well, and now to, thank you so much. And uh, we would like to invite you, uh, some of us, to wake up a little, to move a little. And uh, it's my pleasure to receive Ana Carrillo and Priyanka for an interactivity um, action now or game, whatever they want to do with us. Please, Ana and Priyanka, go ahead with your activity. Thank you so much, Dr. Anarma. So I'm pretty sure that you all have played Kahoot. So we would like to know how much you know about cup. So this is the pin for the, for the game. You need to go to kahoot.it and I will share the uh, link in the chat and also the pin. We will wait a minute so people can go in. Uh, is everyone ready? We can start. Or someone is still trying to get in. Shall we get in in the cell phone or in the computer? Uh, you can get in whenever you want. I think it's, maybe it's easier if you are in your computer with Zoom. Maybe it's easier if you go in your read the questions the computer okay thank you
Okay, we will start. How much do you know about cook? The first question is, when and where was the first ever cup hosted? 1995 in Berlin, 1993 in Madrid, 1990 in Italy, or 1992 in Wow, congratulations, Mark. You were the first one. Okay, so the next one is the COP is the apex decision making body of the uh, United Nations Conference of Change, United Nations Congress of Conservation, or the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which is the UNF Triple C. <laughs> Oh wow, that's amazing. 18 of y'all knew the answer. That's amazing. Mar is still on the top. And now you can take over the next. So the third question is, as of 2020, the UNFCCC has how many signature parties? 179, 160, or 197? Hi, Mar is still on the top. So the first international climate agreement was an historic outcome of which of COP21 and the Paris Agreement. Is it true or is it false? Great. We have 16 people who knew it. And now we have Chet. So the next question is, who is currently appointed as the president of COP26? Mar is back in the top. So yeah, the 26 UN Climate Change Conference of the Parties is being held where? 19 of you all got it right. Wow. Mar is still on the top. So the last question is, the Paris Agreement goal is to limit global warming to well below two, preferably two compared to pre-industrial levels. Almost everyone got it right. So in third place, we have Vanessa. In second place, we have Andres David. And on first place, we have Mar. Congratulations, Mar. You know a lot about that. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Anna and Priyanka. Thank you for the winners. And now we will start with the project presentation. And I would like to remind you that you, do, you have three to five minutes to present your project. And we will let you know via chat when one minute is left for you. 
Then the presentations will go now for the first uh, place, Artificial Intelligent Machine Learning Workshop by OMDESI from the United States. Please, um, if you can go. Okay. Now. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much, John. Oh, okay. Ahead, please. I'm just going to do a quick presentation right now. So, so yeah, here's machine learning by Ombisai. And so, well, the first thing I'd like to know is I'm part of the FXB Climate Advocates, right? And what we do is we're basically a group of young climate activists who want to work together to protect the planet using different means and a nonprofit format. And so there's a whole lot of youth that works with us, and we've been working on a whole lot of different projects. And right now, I'll talk about my, I'll talk about my and my friend's project to basically use newer technology like machine learning or artificial intelligence to make a real difference in helping the planet. So, so the first idea we had was dashboard Earth. And now, one thing we noticed, one problem we noticed was that oftentimes people have a lot of trouble like finding climate data in one place. They have a lot of trouble seeing which parts need to be fixed. And often policies take the wrong priorities, things that maybe don't decrease carbon as much as other actions could. And so we thought it would be a good idea to basically have some sort of place where all climate data could be mapped out in one place. And basically using data science, we could be able to, we could be able to outline all this data in something easily accessible for someone not very experienced with climate data or with computers, thereby making the fight for climate change much more public and allowing information to become much more common. So, not only that, but we're also working on Project Green. And what Project Green does is that it uses image processing and machine learning to detect if deforestation or afforestation is occurring. This means that basically using image processing from either a drone or a satellite, it can see if either trees are missing from an area where they're plantable, which means that deforestation efforts have occurred, or that trees are plantable in a new area, which can help basically replant trees and works as carbon sinks. And so this tool can take into effect soil quality, weather, and resources in any given area to find out where trees are plantable. Now, this is important because oftentimes reforestation efforts, especially in many developing countries, often fail because the climates are poor for reforestation. And a lot of the people doing reforestation, they're like local homegrown efforts, and they might not have the most automatic information about where to plant trees. However, this could help by basically teaching them, not teaching them, but working as a tool for basically showing them where trees can be planted and making sure these reforestation efforts are successful. And now, now the last thing I'd want to present is protecting biodiversity. So we recently got a $10,000 grant from Microsoft and basically the general idea behind it is oftentimes Groups use camera traps in forests to protect biodiversity. And basically how they do this is they can monitor animal populations by taking samples of animals walking past a certain camera. However, detecting which animals they are is hard work. And in the past, humans had to label the animals by hand, which takes time and makes the process much less useful. However, with new advances in machine learning, it is possible to detect animals automatically. However, it still is difficult to detect animals in areas where those animals don't usually live. And so basically the problem we're trying to solve is detecting these animals in new unfamiliar areas, areas where they might be forced due to changes in the climate to migrate to. This can have serious implications in protecting animal life. It's gonna be much easier to track and follow animals and thus protect biodiversity. So why did I show you these three examples? Well, I wanted to basically prove that climate change is something that you can fight using the skills at your disposal. We happen to be good at technology, right? And we believe that by working with technology, new technology, we can basically combine our skills with our passion for doing something to help the world. And by combining both of those, we can actually do what we're good at and 
help animal life, protect forests, and make the fight for battling climate change much more public. Again, all of these are also keeping in mind that I want to make them as easy for possible for anyone to be able to work on these and for anyone to be able to help, because I think this truly demonstrates that climate change is a public fight and that anyone can do something to really help the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amt. That's certainly a very important and amazing uh, project, and that will help also the re scientific research. Thank you, Amt. Well, now the floor goes to Resilience 2020. We will uh, hear the presentation from uh, Kevin and Ivan from Mexico. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to. Can you switch? Uh, we don't see your screen. Are you sharing? It's in black. It's in black. Okay. Yeah. It's coming. Okay. It's coming. You can see Five the black years. screen. That's the time the, the last IPCC report gave us to humanity to say, what are you doing? Time is running. That's the solution. It was born during the pandemic in order to address climate and economic crisis. And we do it eco technologies, circular economy, and change in the production and consumption pattern. Sorry, I, something's wrong, I think. So shall I continue? Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay, so uh, we install five eco technologies for free, allowing people to save money. Through a greenhouse, they can produce their own food compost enriches the soil that they need for their plants. A water harvesting system reduces water consumption for the greenhouse. The solar heater reduces fossil fuel gas consumption to heat water. And the biodigester, one of our favorite ecotechnologies, has many benefits. In resilience, we use two of them, the biogas, which can be used to cook, and the bio, an organic liquid fertilizer. We buy the bio and other subproducts generated by the households and integrate them into a circular economy system. We sell the bio to farmers at the, price, at the price of the cheapest synthetic fertilizer in the market so that they can transform their production into an organic one without increasing their costs. And we also buy them some of their now organic products under a fair trade scheme and sell it back in the city. Uh, we provide household constant training so that they can learn how to manage the ecotechnologies and learn how to cultivate their food and produce compost. We also produce organic and biodegradable cosmetic, cleaning, and gardening products, the cheapest on the market. For each product sold, some percentage goes to an emergency fund for businesses and for indigenous communities in the center and south of the country. These products are also a way in which we finance the ecotechnologies. So magic happens when we implement, install these eco technologies in, five, in 14 homes. So we receive part of these consumption savings from each house. And with that adding up with the profit from the same homes allow us to install more eco techniques per year, each, more eco techniques in each home per year. Year. During Mexican data, these 14 homes turned out to be in five years, 31 homes. And they receive an extra US dollar, and we only install a uh, use 30,000 US dollar as an initial investment. 1,700 hectares are benefiting from the bio producing biodigesters, and they can transform into an organic production. With only, with only 14 homes. 
Go ahead, Ian. Uh, the B impact assessment tool analysis suggests that we can impact in the 17 SDGs, some more than others, but at a final stage, we will make an average impact of 85% in the 17 SDGs. Uh, we have also a research and development department in order to produce ecotechnologies that suit different spaces. As an example, we are developing a digester that fits into apartments. And so far, we have installed four greenhouses, two water harvesting systems, three solar heaters, four compost, and four biodigesters. They have produced more than six square meters of bio and 70 square meters of biogas. We have also sold 51 Wacalitos Ecologicos, which is a gift box that has all our products. And through them, we have sold more than 1.5 tons of products in four months. And this all has been possible thanks to the 14 resilient professionals that through knowledge and passion believe that they can change the world. And thanks also to our partners, such as Borussia Dortmund, ISEC Alumni Iberoamerica, and especially the pop movement, who have supported us since the beginning. So imagine the community looks like this. Would you, would you like to feel stress? Would you like to have a better health? All of this is possible, and Resilient 2020 is a way. Change everyone's life. Well, impact and a benefit in having a benefit impact for environment. Nature, everything will come again as a healthy environment. We just need to help help let, let, let's help nature uh, change the, uh, by changing our our home, our life home. So here is a QR code and a link. We are using the Facebook private group where we're going to make tomorrow a challenge. Uh, so and we're also using this code uh, into and putting it on our social media and in this chat. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin and, uh, and Ivan. Thank you so much for your presentation. Keep growing, please, and have a great success like you had until now. Now we are going to the next project, Carbon Footprint Reduction Project by Beth Sa uh, Sanyal, Babi Mathur, and Abhi Yaseir from India. I feel sorry for the pronunciation. It is not so good. Thank you so much. Did please go ahead. Thank you so much, Dr. Norma. Hey, everybody. We're the Carbon Footprint Reduction, or CFR, and we're so excited to learn and share on this forum. One fine evening in February 2020, members of the CFR team presented impassioned monologues before an audience of 200 about the state of our climate today, kickstarting a six-month effort to reduce our carbon footprint. Unfortunately, after unforeseen issues, we took a break. But when we reformed, we reformed with a new vision to spread climate science and innovation in the field to make background research more mainstream. And we were able to work towards this unique goal over many months and continue to do so. Today, our project consists of 20 members and utilizes three avenues to achieve our vision. At CFR, we believe in working towards protecting our planet while also developing personal passions, interests, and knowledge. So the emissions calculator, which is the first avenue of CFR, will be a free and advanced environmental assessment methodology. We have a pretty cool website where we'll be publishing this calculator. You input your flight data, which goes through a flight trajectory AI model, which predicts how your aircraft moved over time. Unlike almost every other past work, CFR built an atmospheric model that models parameters like temperature, pressure, wind, and humidity in our atmosphere and combines it to create the most accurate flight trajectory calculations. Then we calculate the fuel consumption using the CFR aircraft database that took seven CFR members 30 hours over three days to complete. It contains engine and seat data on nearly 4,000 aircraft. We use the largest databases, 460,000 airline routes and terabytes of data from NASA real world tracking data from ADSB and many more to make sure that you can get the most accurate carbon footprint calculation. 
This is the state of the art open source calculator. One of the goals at CFR project is to promote individual action and reduce the carbon footprint of our team. Members of the project are currently learning, exploring and implementing solutions in their houses, such as rainwater harvesting and rechargeable batteries. We are also developing an interactive 3D model of a sustainable house plan that will store all these solutions. After picking a solution, you will be guided to our carbon and financial analysis, implementation plan, and other important details, all configured to your custom requirements. One of our major future goals remains to collaborate with designers and architects to further develop and promote the project. Do you want to get played? Because getting played is the CFR game show, where we use mainstream topics like Harry Potter, Marvel, Disney, and weird animals to organize an eight episode event over four months to spread CFR and build environmental appreciation through guests, monologues, and short segments in each episode. We aim to change the approach of people our age because the youth deserves and is obligated to have a seat at the table. This is our future. And by empowering the next generation, we are insisting on a stake in controlling it. The CFR Instagram uploads posts on a regular basis, sharing details about our project, interesting information we learned while working on it, and some awful jokes. After two months of extensive work, we are super close to launching our website. You can find it at cfrproject.org. So stay tuned for that by following it. Additionally, we have a public Discord server, which is really exciting, and you can join it to get to know us better. Feel free to contact us with any questions if you'd like to join us or just have a conversation about what we do. You can find us on Instagram at CFR Project or write us an email at contact at cfrproject.org. We'll put the links in the chat. Climate change is a proven existential threat. And most of the time, it feels like a dire mess. But together, we can find a way out of it. At the CFR project, we believe that this way out is making technology and climate science accessible to everyone. Climate science helps people understand the extent of climate change and exactly what they can do to work towards fixing it. Climate science empowers people and it changes lives. Thank you. Thank you so very much for this amazing, amazing project that like we saw weeks ago. Congratulations. And I hope that, yeah, really, we will learn together with you and we need to spread widely your message and your project and your web when it's ready. Thank you so much for the group CIF. Then now we are going to South Korea with Cherry Soon for the project Greener is Cleaner. Please, Cherry, go ahead. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much for the floor. And um, hello, everyone. I'm Cherry Song, a 15 year old youth activist from South Korea, as mentioned. I have a very great passion in youth activism, empowering youth so that they can take action for the environment and thus their futures. And my biggest statement would be that I always wondered why someone didn't do something about a certain issue. Then I realized that I was the somebody. And that is why I came to realize that I should take action for myself and those around me. I'm the founder and leader of an initiative called Greener is Cleaner. That is a youth-led environmental organization that aims to empower youth worldwide to take action for the environment and therefore their futures. We are recognized by various organizations, as you can see in the logos below. And we have members from four different continents, all promoting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals of 11, 12, 13, and 13 through the last goal of 17, Partnership and Solidarity, to promote collective action to achieve all of those goals. So um, this is like our mission statement. And as I said, we hope to um, empower youth so that they can join the movement, act together and promote solidarity in the fight against climate change and other environmental issues. And we currently have 70 members in total, um, nationally 49 and internationally 21. And we really value the three values of diversity, equity and inclusion so that all voices are heard and different people can take action in different places. One of the projects that we work on is uh, called Ecoloki. Ecoloki is a conference, a uh, free virtual conference that allows youth 
at any places to discuss and participate in activities about specific environmental issues and their solutions. Participants get an opportunity to meet someone uh, from different continent, different members of Greener is Cleaner, as well as youth from different organizations who share a common interest to preserve the environment and secure their futures. Greener is Cleaner also gives um, presentations and education ses sessions at conferences, schools, community events, strikes, and individual organizations or clubs. The topics frequently cover their climate change and international relations, youth empowerment, and the importance of activism. Speeches and presentations are audience specific, meaning that they're adjusted for different ages and skill levels. Another project is called Echo Schools, which is the largest global sustainable schools program that engages students in action-based learning in the classroom and expands to the community. Greener is Cleaner operates as a club in Chattanooga International, um, the school that I am attending at the moment, and it is the first Echo School campus that is recognized in South Korea. And lastly, we initiate and participate in community campaigns and projects. Some examples are beach and city cleanups, the return to unnecessary campaign, where we returned over 100 plastic straws to a corporation that produced it. And um, the corporation decided and announced that their plan to remove the plastic straw from the product as a whole. But you may ask why youth should take action. Why is youth activism and leadership important? I believe that there are three reasons. The first one being ideas. Youth have ideas that transcend that of the older generation because we're living in the MZ generation where we can find new and innovative solutions to global issues. A good example is Boyan Slot, the founder and leader, the CEO of the um, Ocean Cleanup Initiative. And the second one is Greta Thunberg. Um, the founder of Fridays for Future. This means that the youth has the voice to reflect the future environment because we will be living in the future. We are the main stakeholders. And lastly, um, and most importantly, the adults, the other generations are supporting youth activism to voice themselves and take action for themselves. A great example is currently the UN Youth 2030 campaign held by the Youth Envoy and the Secretary General. So before I end my quick presentation and showcase of my initiative, I would like to share um, my advice on how to lead, how to be a change maker. Um, so leading means, first of all, live the purpose and love the people to be the person you were born to be and not just to be successful in life. So basically think of others' interests. You have to also exercise faith and exemplify true actions. The world needs more believers as it needs more dreamers. So leaders must show and go the way, leading by example. You must also accept, them, accept mistakes and allow change because life is like a roller coaster. You should consider if you're going to fail forwards or fail backwards. And lastly, deal with your weaknesses and dwell with your strengths. Weaknesses tell you that you are good at something else. So don't be depressed about your weaknesses, but focus on what you have and who you are. So you can turn your misery into your mission, turn your mess into a message. So that is like the guiding vision of Greener's Cleaner. And that is all from my side. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Kerry. Kerry, no doubt that this is a very important project. And uh, yeah, you're working very hard. You are committed and we recognize this effort that you are doing and certainly you can have in us as a pop family a support for your activities. Thank you so much. And finally, we are going to the last project. The last but not the least will be notes on photovoltaic energy in rural localities by Alejandro Guevara, Mexico. Please, Alejandro, go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Good morning. First of all, I want to thank the organizing committee of the Precop 26 event for the invitation you made me and for the opportunity to present our work that belongs to a doctoral research at the Interdisciplinary Center for Research and Studies on Environment and Development. My name is Alejandro Guevara. I'm from Mexico, and the work is titled Photovoltaic Energy and Rural Sustainable Development, Potrero de la Palmita, K. 
community Mexico. The image seen in the background corresponds to a view from the community towards the reservoir where two rivers converge. Cerro de la Palmita is a rural and indigenous community located in the state of Nayarit in western Mexico, as can be seen in red in the Mexico map. On the large map in the yellow box, you can see the city of Tepic, which is the capital of the state. The community of Potrero de la Palmita is located northeast of Tepic. To get to the community, you must take a 50 miles road until you reach a dam college Aguamilpa. From there, you must rent a boat transport with a 12 miles over the dam reservoir. In the red circle on the map, you can see the location of the community. It is worth mentioning that the municipality of El Nayar, where Potrero de la Palmita is located, is the poorest in the state of Nayarit and one of the poorest in the country, according to the Ministry of Social Development. In the community, there are about 700 inhabitants. They belong to the Huixacrica ethnic indigenous group and they maintain traditions typical of their ethnic. Politically, they are represented by assemblies. Religiously, they maintain ancestral customs. Economically, they are sustained by three activities, fishing, tourism, and handicrafts. They have been greatly affected by the pandemic, particularly their incomes from tourists and the sale of handicrafts. Regarding the environment and the climate, it is arid and dry most of the time. They do not have irrigation water. This causes poor harvests. The rains only occurs three months a year, and it rains very hard but less frequently. Finally, the community had an intervention in 2015 by international and national organizations that install a decentralized solar photovoltaic systems in a mini-grid configuration with 572 solar panels of 250 watts each. Unfortunately, today it is only used for lighting. Few inhabitants have the possibility to buy electrical appliances and pay the electricity bills for it. Most of the inhabitants only have lighting and others do not even have lighting in their homes. In this context, the research aims to know how this community can achieve sustainable local development by analyzing the potential of the solar system in combination with local resources as well as by observing the socio-economic, cultural and environmental behavior of the community. It is intended to carry out and analyze from the perspective of the social actor, that is, from the community, to identify local development process. Two factors drive the research. Top-down interventions have not made the community develop. On the other hand, there is an international consensus that electric power is a necessary resource to promote agriculture, agro-industry, and economic activities that can generate income. Well, up to here is my participation. I want to thank again the invitation to the organizing committee. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you so much, Alejandro, for this project. <clears throat> Sorry, for this project that, yeah, in fact, has a, a lot of uh, social impacts with the community and it's clear that when the community is not involved in the projects, the things will, will, will go wrong, okay? Thank you so much. And thank you to all of you for your presentations. And uh, now we go ahead with our program and I ask Ana Carrillo to help us with a video from uh, Young Voices, My Climate Change, from Climate Aid and Pop Movement. Thank you so much to all of you and thank you for your participation in your amazing projects. Please, Anna, go ahead.
The world as we know it is facing its largest threat for millions of years. Scientists are referring to this threat as the sixth mass extinction. Every year between 10 and 100,000 species are becoming extinct. Human activities such as the burning of fossil fuels are causing a global increase in temperature which has fatal consequences for the environment. United Nations and IPCC have released yet another alarming climate report which confirms that politicians simply haven't done enough. More than 50 years ago, our politicians and governments were informed about the increasing threat to the climate by the scientific community. Maybe they listened, but they obviously didn't hear. If we don't act now, who will? Pollution of our air, our water, our land. You hear about it so much because climate change is now our norm. This wetland was once a beauty of the community. One of the places with extremely droughts in the country. This summer in Chennai, locals were praying for some rain. In Mumbai, people were reeling under floods. In Cameroon, the main source of climate change remains pollution, especially through plastic waste. We are living in Mexico City and climate change effects has been felt here in the form of heavy rain and floods. Is that our glaciers are disappearing. Meanwhile, wildfires are increasing because of longer droughts. A rise in the temperatures, over, over two degrees of the temperature has been recorded over the years. A rise in that increase every single year, it keeps on increasing. I grew up in California and was impacted by the wildfires in my area. Evacuating from my house was just a regular part of growing up. Thank you so much, Anna. It was a really a very important and strong message from the Voices of the World. Thank you so much for this amazing video. And you can, you could hear all the the voices, all the messages that they are really a pressure for us to act now for climate change. Now we are going to Rashi Meta to guide us for a fun activity, an interactive activity. Please go ahead, uh, Rashi, if you are free, uh, ready now. Thank yeah, hi, hi, Norma. Um, hi. Thank you for handing over. Um, so we are also conducting an activity on Kahoot only. So if everyone can please go on to Kahoot.it and I will share the game pin with you all. Just I'm just going to be pasting the link, uh, sorry, the pin in the, in the link chat box. So if everyone can please log in. I've got 12 people who have joined. If I'm just going to wait for two more minutes.
Hi, uh, Rajan Jari, are you going to present your screen? Uh, I am trying to, but it tells me I'll have to quit uh, the meeting and rejoin. So I haven't done that yet. <laughs> But uh, uh, so um, the Kahoot version that I'm using, uh, every participant can see the questions and the answers on their own screen. Okay, thank you. So we have 22 participants. I guess we can start. Is anyone else joining in? Okay, I'm just gonna start. Okay, one more person did join. It's maybe a minute more. Okay, I think we can start. So the first question is really easy and basic to start with, to keep it light. Is climate change real? Okay, everyone got that one right, obviously. So Kizran was the fastest for this answer. Question number two, which is the most common greenhouse gas in the atmosphere? Okay, everyone got that correct. Carbon dioxide. Ivan is leading the chart now. Question number three, which greenhouse gas has the maximum global warming potential? Nine, sorry, five people got that right. It is SF6. Bhavya is leading the chart now. Um, question number four, which year is tied for the warmest year on record? Okay, eight people got that correct. So 2020 was uh, in par with 2016 as uh, the hottest year on earth. Bhavya is still reading, leading the board. Uh, question number five, uh, tropospheric ozone is?
So six people got that right. It is a secondary pollutant. This is when uh, uh, different gases are mixed together, which creates uh, the ozone. Disha is leading the chart now. Question number six. How much has the sea level risen in the past 100 years? Fourteen people got that right. Yes, it is six to eight inches. Disha is still leading the board. Uh, next question: Which of these acts as the world's largest carbon sink? Okay, maximum of the people got that correct. It's the oceans and followed by forests is number two. Disha is still leading the charts. Uh, question number eight. The loss of sea ice has the potential to dash global warming trends and to change climate patterns. I will repeat that the loss of sea ice has the potential to dash global warming trends and to change climate patterns. Sixteen people got that correct. Yes, it is accelerate. Moving on to the next question. Uh, GSG emissions are categorized into DASH or scopes by the most widely used international accounting tool. Maximum of the people got that right. It's three groups, which is scope one, scope two, and scope three. Bhavya is leading the chart now, beating Disha just by, by a few points. Um, next question, which country contributes uh, maximum to GHG emissions? Twelve people, maximum people were correct. It is China. U.S. comes number two, followed by India at number three, and the European Union is at number four. Mar is leading the charts now. Go Mar. Uh, next question: Which activity contributes the most to global CO two emissions? Now, 
nine people got that correct. It is energy production, um, transportation, and agriculture come way behind that. Largest uh, sector is energy, which takes around, I think, 60 to 70 percent. Um, now we are trying to move in a little into the policy part uh, where we'll bring in COP. So uh, increasing the level of financial flow from the public, private and not for profit sectors to tackle climate change. What is that term? Seven people got that right. It is called green finance. Disha is back to leading the charts again. Question number 13, which activity has more emission reduction potential? Sixteen people got that right. It's switching to renewable energy for electricity and heating. Disha is still Hello, leading. Rashi. Yeah, hi. Sorry. Do you think we can um, finish in question number fifteen? Um, I'm actually it's moving over to the cock once, so I'm just gonna go to those. Okay. These Do were you more think general. we can finish on question number fifteen? Yeah, sure. This is okay. the current international treaty to address okay. climate change and its negative impacts. Everyone got that right, Paris Agreement. Moving on to my last question. Um, this helps governments to set their climate change trends and thus the targets of various sectors, localities, and organizations. Six people only got that correct. It is the conference of parties. Um, I think I will stop now since we're running out of time. Uh, Mar is leading right now. So congratulations, Mar. Uh, second place is Disha. And third place is Red. Congratulations, all. Thank you so much, Rashi, for this interesting exercise how much we know about the COP and how much we know about climate change issues. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, now we are going to a discussion and knowledge sharing from different young leaders to seek for strategies and solutions with your leaders about different topics like youth on decision-making, acceleration, accelerating climate action, action, key items for climate political negotiations, transition to a sustainable development, climate ambition, net zero program, and so on. I would like to present each of our young leaders and I will ask them please to turn on your camera and to say hello to everybody. I call Ana Carrillo from Mexico, Ian Ulloa from the USA, Avelina Fragoso from Mexico, Makia Kuson from India, Hilario Pot from Mexico, Alexia Muñoz from Mexico, Cherry from Zoom from South Korea, 
Krishna Fatima from Pakistan, Andres Barragan from, uh, from sorry, Colombia, from Mexico, uh, Silvia Cantú, Mexico, Najid Pérez, Mexico, Samuel Okori, Nigeria, Nigeria, Samantha Salazar, Mexico, Raúl Leiva, Mexico, Ricardo Delgado, Venezuela, and Abhishek Patanaik from India. Can you uh, share with your screen and to say hello, please? Can you open your screen all up for our youth leaders, please? We, we, we need to look at you hello. to say hello and to make a picture from all of you. Congratulations. Um, yeah, here we have it. Thank you so much to be together with us. It's a pleasure to have you as a, as a young leaders working with the Pop family. Thank you. And now we are going to an activity that we named the breakout, breakout rooms. We are going to three breakout rooms. And uh, I will ask Vanessa and Ahir to make these groups. And if you want to to take a decision, you are going to one of the three uh, great uh, breakout rooms, please. Go ahead, Vanessa. Thank you so much, Dr. Rama. You are going to receive a notification, um, everybody. So right now we're going to start the discussions, um, sharing strategies and solutions on the subjects assigned. And um, you have 15 minutes. And after this, we are going to share with everybody. So please accept the, the invitation that you are right now getting to our young leaders. So while we wait our young leaders to discuss these important subjects, we are going to showcase um, some about, about the activities that the pop movement has. So right now we're going to present you the movie of the Pop Festival 2021. When, when it's about climate change, I also think that um, it's uh, never late. You must act now. This is, of course, a huge, huge responsibility. But the youth is not alone in this massive task. The youth can count on mentors, on people who have come before and showed us the way with their groundbreaking work. And one of those persons is, of course, Dr. Rajendra K. Pachauri, and I take this opportunity to salute his memory. One is not saying that the development has to stop. You can't go back to the Stone Age. It is that people do have aspirations, our children, our next generation. But at the same time, it cannot be the societies cannot simply be built on consume, uh, consumerism. Did you know that the atmosphere is polluted? Did you know that groundwater is contaminated? You might not care much about these issues, but beware, the pollutants have made it to Nigeria, the most populated country in Africa, and of course in West Africa, more people are falling into poverty there rather than getting out of poverty, as for example is the case in, say, in India. It's 
not necessarily that people don't know that things are happening or that there's uh, environmental degradation. The problem is that they don't know how to be involved or they can't be involved and they have limitations. Um, making sure that, of course, that you don't waste water is highly important in my country for sure, but people still do it. First, plastic is a huge problem for animals. Uh, the, other, the other months, uh, a whale was dying in Thailand and it was vomiting plastic bags while dying. It's such a horrible death. When I was five years old, I heard about the plastic pollution, polluting our water, food, soil, and threatening the existence of flora and fauna, including humans. We are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction and it's 10% more than what is considered normal. Plastic is used in packaging. It's the typical plastic that we're trying to recycle in our house. On a, on a global scale, it's about 40% of all the production of plastics goes into single-use plastics. in very diverse areas of society from their roles into their There are 10,000 species of birds in the world. Vultures are amongst the most threatened group of birds. They clean up carcasses right to the bone. They help to kill all the bacteria. You know. Yeah, I definitely think that these digital skills that we're developing are, are very useful. Innovation is a very big part of our future. Um, I think that without it, we're gonna have a really hard time. We have hope, we have opportunity, we have hope, we have coming together, we have harmony, we have community, we have the pop movement. We have coming together, we have connecting you all. What happened? Where advocates engage with the community. Grassroots outreach is re recruiting and educating the public on climate solutions. Cool event. Leadership is, is becoming extremely important and I think the world needs 
what I call a transition to a new vision. Invest here in social enterprises, which are financially self-sustainable. We talked about that. So it's not just for-profit business. A well-founded fear of persecution. You have left your country. That is, you've crossed the, uh, an international border and you are seeking protection on the basis of um, uh, race, religion, nationality, political opinion, or membership in a particular social group. Uh, every career is a climate career. What we're going to talk about is climate action and like all of us have seen the coverage of climate of the climate crisis. Because we do often talk about the responsibilities of uh, individuals and of companies, but what about the responsibilities of governments? And we have some examples of bad actors. Um, you know, uh, certainly Russia has really done a lot um, in, in recent years to try to block uh, action on climate. I have, I'm afraid you're not going to like this one. Did you know that the atmosphere is polluted? Did you know that groundwater is contaminated? You might not care much about these issues, but beware, the pollution has made it to a tissue. It's present everywhere now, it's creating a sphere. It also kills a million birds and sea animals. I've been worked in this climate change domain for over 10 years. I've been worked in this climate change domain for over 10 years, I realized that the knowledge gap that exists today, uh, while there are only... Uh, having worked in this climate change domain for over 10 years, I realized that the knowledge gap that exists today, uh, while there are only a few people, and that would be in a few hundreds of people, in a country of 1.3 billion, who understand uh, the nitty gritties of climate policy. And for me, having worked with uh, communities and understanding the impacts that we are having as urban India, it is very, very important that the youth of the country get more aware of policies, of climate change, because everybody understands the issue with climate change. The solution is where the gap lies. And that's where the genesis of Carbon Initiative Forum started, <clears throat> where the idea was that the gap that exists uh, between activism and actual solutions can be bridged with more knowledge. And that is where a lot of the work that we have been doing or, or will try and do in future as well is to educate the youth. And that would start with B schools and fall into curriculums of all kinds, uh, be it engineering, be it medical, because it affects us all. For, ha for us to have a knowledge base with climate as we move ahead in our careers with our startups and our businesses and all of the other career choices that people make. So the idea is to have a very, very large um, a group of people who vote ultimately on climate change. And that would mean that you first start educating yourself on climate change. Policies, why should policymakers be the only ones knowing about what your country's policies are? you are a citizen of this country, you need to be empowered as well. So that is where the genesis started, that's where the work is going on, and hopefully it carries on for a lot more years to come. Having worked in this climate change domain for over 10 years, I realized that Thank you, Vanessa, for uh, the video from our festival, the last festival. I hope that you enjoy it and for the wonderful message that we got from India. Thank you so very much. Now, waiting for the breakout rooms, we would like to make an announcement about the crowdfunding campaign. The Puff Movement is launching the Archipatory crowdfunding campaign. The purpose of this campaign is to generate funds to support youth-led climate action projects globally. We want to promote climate innovation and action by the youth to acknowledge their efforts and in the, at international platforms and provide greater opportunities and, of course, overcome funding challenges faced by young innovators. Will serve, uh, um, sorry, young innovators, indigenous communities, and vulnerable groups to execute their projects. 
Of course, that we will get a lot of benefits from these donations that uh, will serve as a motivation for the youth. We need some funds. We need to get donations from all people who wants to work for climate change, who wants to support youth for action that is very urgent at this moment. Please, in the chat, you're going to have the link to uh, send your donations. And we encourage you to donate. Please donate in this Archi Patriotic Crowdfunding campaign. Thank you so very much for those messages, for those videos, and this uh, campaign that we wait uh, very, with very pleasure to have your donations. Thank you so much. Now, uh, if uh, Vanessa will bring us back to the main room, we will listen the outcomes that the representatives from each group will give us in a few seconds, few minutes, I don't know. Vanessa, how is the time now? They are coming back. Yeah, I think we have five more minutes um, just to wait our leaders on the breakout rooms. And while we wait, um, just to report what Dr. Norma uh, mentioned to us about the RK crowdfunding campaign, we are showcasing a, a little video um, right now just to invite everybody to, to follow and donate the pop movement. So um, we are showcasing the video. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, I think that we have time for philo, for uh, the activity of Mentimeter, or we will skip. What do you think? Philo, are you ready? We are waiting for the youth. Uh, yeah, I think Philo has a little issue with the microphone, uh, but I think um, we can just take the activity. It's two minutes activity. So once we finish the city, we can just um, bring all our leaders back. That's okay, Doctor. Okay, perfect. Go ahead, okay. please. So let me share my screen. It's a quick activity. Okay, so for this activity, you need um, to enter a code. I will message you the um, the link, the website link for the activity. And right now I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I, I have sent you guys uh, the, the link to, uh, to go to menti.com and enter the code that is on screen and just help us answering. Are you personally concerned about climate change? Do you think it's a problem that's affecting your life, your health, that it's going to affect your children? What do you think about climate change? Do you feel concerned about it? Yes. It looks like 
the 100% of people that we are here. We are concerned about this issue. And it's, it's important to think if our people that our surrounding, the are and our surroundings also is concerned because sometimes we feel alone and we feel that we are the only ones thinking on that. So I think it's a really important for us to spread the message, um, give awareness to our community and to talk about these subjects that it's affecting our life and will affect more. So we have another question for you. Thank you so much for answering this. And we can see that 100% of the people that we are here are concerned about climate change. So now share with us, what actions do you take to tackle climate change? What can you share with everybody so we can also follow that actions and also take climate action in our lives? What are you personally following? Use my power as consumer. That's a really nice one. Active lifestyle changes. Hold leaders accountable. Apply research. That's really important. Separate trash. Yeah, sometimes all well, here in Mexico, um, when you throw the trash, the people from the trash, they get all the trash and they throw it in the same um, in the same container. So it's really important to get that culture from our houses to separate the trash and to also advocate with our governments and our communities to do the same. So we can really make a change and um, make this circular economy that we need and it can, it can be made with trash. Recycle my clothes, that's a really important one. Sometimes we don't need a lot of clothes, really, and we just buy and buy clothes, and it's a really, really industry that it's polluting a lot in the world. Conserve electricity, also conserve electricity. It's really important. Be part of the pub movement. Oh, <laughs> that's a wonderful one. <laughs> yeah, let's invite everyone to be part of the pub movement and also to take climate action and to have this lifestyle that we also are taking. And it's hard. I trust me. I, I think it's a really hard um, process, but it's it's um, possible. And I think we can share that with our communities also. Use. Um, Segregation, separate trash, reduce plastic waste. Yeah, that's an important one. Hold leaders accountable, recycle. Raising awareness online. Yeah, right now social media, it's something really important. So raising awareness on social media, it's the key. Sustainability project. Yeah, launch projects on sustainability. That's also really important. Being in the pop movement, <laughs> it's two times. That's that's a good that's a good <laughs> signal. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. So I don't know. Maybe you can take a screenshot of this so that you don't forget, and you can start maybe today with one activity. Once you achieve that activity, you can go to the other one. So it's really important for us to take climate action by our own. So this can work. You can take a screenshot right now or a picture and you can just have that as, as your challenges, <laughs> daily challenges. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, this. Vanessa. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I made my picture. I have it. <laughs> Thank you. We are ready with, the, with our youth leaders.
they are in the main room already? Yeah, no, they, they are not, but they are coming. So maybe we okay. can just wait one minute more and we can. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Doctora. You're welcome. Well, it was uh, until now a good uh, meeting, very good meeting, very good messages from our youth, very important from uh, the, the problem we are facing, the difficulties that we are ha having now and how we can act, what we can do, when we can do it. And yeah, I think that is so very important. to help each other, not only youth, but everyone that is in the way of taking climate action to share with all of us. Thank you so very much. I see that they are coming back. If you are ready, you Nahid, can you tell me when everyone is uh, already in the mirror room, please? Yeah. Thank you so much. What we're gonna do now is to have the presentation of each of the three groups. They had a rep representing somebody who will coordinate uh, the outcomes that they had and we share with us to see what they did, what they think, what actions they propose to take, and in general, how they see uh, this kind of work together with different nationalities, different minds, different way to think. And yeah, if you say that we are ready, we start with group one, Vanessa, in the heat. Okay. Yes, then thank you so very much to our young leaders that today share um, work together in different topics. I would like to invite the group number one to give us the results and the outcome that you had, please, who say, yes, I do. Thank you, Dr. Norma. Uh, yeah, Mahia will be sharing our conclusions. Okay. Thank you, thank you. So I'm representing group number one. And the first question was that, what strategies can be followed to include uh, youth on decision-making worldwide? And I strongly believe that we are the last generation, you know, who can do something. And we have technology, we have knowledge, we, uh, you, know, you know, we have almost all the resources right now. So we should, you know, teach the other people who are with us, uh, spread the awareness, use our vibes and uh, use our knowledge to aware the other people. Because if we will not take stand, then there is nobody who will. The generations who have lived have almost lived their lives and they are really happy with the changes that the, uh, that the technology has made because technology has made their life very easy. So they think that everything is very good. But we know that there are, uh, you know, the uh, bad, bad uh, situations that are coming. So we, knew, we need to uh, aware, we need to use internet, we need, we need to use technology the best way. We need to aware people to use our energy to the best level. The second question was that how can climate action be accelerated worldwide? So climate ac action and uh, climate change is not a rocket science. Everybody understands it. Even if uh, they are not an environment student, they are just, uh, you know, somebody uh, in a different perspectives, different stages of their life, they understand what climate change is because they feel it. They feel that the rain is heavy. They feel that this, the heat is bad. But the point is that they don't know what to do. So if we want to accelerate, we just want to, we just have to tell them that they have to change their perspective a little. You know, they have to be little mindful of what they are doing in their lives. So that little change in the perspective, that little change in, uh, you know, being a little mindful, using it correctly, using, uh, you know, the clothes you're buying, the water you, that you are having, the RO water that you're having, and the weight, waste that it produces, the AC they're using, everything. So you need to be a little mindful. So these are the two outcomes. And I guess that we youth have a lot of energy, a lot of uh, positive vibes. And it really encourages me to see a lot of people like me 
who think like that who want to make you know bring a change in the world and in their lifestyle and they follow that path so it is really nice thank you so much for this opportunity and i hope that uh, you know if we keep on working like that something good will happen for sure thank you so much thank you so much group 1 mahia for be the representing of your group and thank you so much for your message that goes to everyone technology and change of style that is very like your style is very important thank you thank you so very much we will take uh, in account this please now we go to group number 2 who is representing of number yes, two? I'm representing group number two. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Kish. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you I'll so much. Quickly, I'll just quickly introduce myself. Hello, everyone. My name is Khizran. I am 16 years old, a junior in high school, and I am here on behalf of my organization called Man Impact. Uh, Man Impact. It is a youth-oriented, SDG-focused or nonprofit organization that works to inform, inform, inspire, and motivate its participants to take action for the SDGs while using the International Model United Nations uh, community. So I'll be presenting group two, and our topics were our questions were uh, number one: what key items are necessary for climate political negotiations? So we our group was very enthusiastic, I'd say, uh, in discussing this, and we came up with very, uh, very powerful discussions. Uh, and I'll just share a few of those because I believe we do not have much time. So the first one is transparency, which we all agreed upon. Um, Strengthening transparency requirements is necessary for negotiations, uh, political negotiations, because uh, it creates a sense of equality because one country or one region knows the action being taken in the other region. So that actually uh, promotes e uh, equality among the regions, among the developed, underdeveloped nations, and that actually helps the developed and the more uh, benefited countries that have the fundings, that have the financial uh, financial capabilities to help those that do not, the developing and underdeveloped, they can help the underdeveloping, developed na developing nations to take as, in, as much impact as they're taking so that equal, equal uh, there's a balance in uh, action that has been taken by every region uh, for, sustain, uh, for climate uh, action. Uh, the next one uh, that we, came across was countries should hold themselves accountable and they should hold multilateral discussions, regional dis uh, discussions, international discussions, uh, and they, so that they're aware of what other countries are doing and they can actually inspire themselves. And then there should be a safe, renewable energy transition to make it, uh, make it uh, to getting uh, the, to gain the public trust and to make it safe for everyone, uh, for their country, for the, the people living in the rural and, uh, rural and the people living in the urban areas. Next is climate justice. Uh, climate change actually brings a lot of inequality and in impact between, as I said before, the uh, developed and the underdeveloped nations. So climate justice is a key factor to bringing pol political negotiations so that, as, we, as I said before, there's equality, there's justice, there's uh, transparency, and there's a, a balance in impact being being brought. Uh, next, another very key uh, factor is uh, youth in decision making should be negotiated negotiated as well because uh, youth actually have ambitious ideas and they have the capability to actually move forward with their ideas because they're very uh, determined at this point. Uh, so making more ambitious events for youth and uh, actually making more financing for youth initiatives uh, should also be negotiated. And then uh, mobilizing finances for climate loss and damages is also very important to, and should be taken into consideration along with educating every single uh, every single nation, every single individual on environment, uh, environment stability, environmental work, and not only the normal citizens, the governmental sectors and the ministries should also educate themselves on the latest issues, the latest facts and figures that are coming in, the statistics, the UN st statistics that are coming in so that they are are up to date with every uh, action that has been taken and that will actually help them to create eco-friendly policies that will be properly moderated uh, and will be uh, well suited with all the regions and there will be urgent response actions. Our second question was what strategy, uh, strategies can be followed for transition to a sustainable uh, development? 
And also for this, uh, we have come up with different ideas such as uh, create, taking it one step at a time, not long, not focusing on long term, long term goals, rather focusing on what can be done right now at this point. Since we saw that in the latest IPCC report, it is ha it has been claimed that it is code red for humanity. So we there should be no room for delays, no room for excuses. We need to take action now. So that is why we should focus on taking one step at a time, but taking it taking a step that it actually brings powerful impact, and then starting action regionally rather than internationally so that we have a target audience and our message our impact can be well received by the that audience transformations towards sustainability cannot be imposed from above so we should work from the bottom establish ourselves accept the failures work on our failures take in our weaknesses and build ourselves upon that is very important as well and then using stories to drive change moreover there should be sustainable transition and uh the youth should actually inquire the governments that what they mean by sustainable development, what is our country's uh, insight on sustainable development, what it aims to achieve. Because since every country is at a different transition stage, at a different developmental stage, everyone has different aims. Someone, some countries have a net zero, some, some have carbon ambition, some have a greenhouse gas emission. So everyone needs to be informed about what their government's mindset towards sustainable development is and then we should focus on people we should focus on the climate we should focus on the environment but we shouldn't be focusing on profit and self benefits the every individual country should uh, actually take part in bringing international impact while focusing regionally right that means that if someone is bringing in since the sdgs are all integrated that means action in one area affects action in the other and the sdgs are a universal call to action they do not differentiate between the global north or the global south so having youth innovative solutions having finance for youth initiatives and having job transitions and energy sectors for empo for empowering the citizens is actually very uh, very important when we receive when we want to achieve sustainable development Lastly, there should be education and outreach so that uh, we, so that the, each nation and each regional locally they can have a, a good structural uh, strategy for achieving sustainable development. There should be environmental education to convince more people to bring change and impact in their regions, and there should be more green jobs, incentives, and green justice. That's all that our group came up with, and we hope that uh, we hope that. Sorry for taking too long. Uh, we hope that you have actually gotten. Uh, a gist of what we've discussed and we hope that it's actually beneficial for those that are watching it live and those that are actually here in this meeting right now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kirja. I think that it's a very important issue that you were talking about. Uh, I will ask to all groups to send us a brief note of your results and outcomes in your own words that could be different from, from ours as a novel. Okay, thank you so very much. Congratulations. And now we go to the third, third group, please. Yeah. We'll thank you, Dr. Talk. Norma, uh, <laughs> for the <laughs> third group. We saw Climate Ambition and Net Zero Program. And I would like to hand it over to Samantha, please. Yeah, thank you very much. First of all, to all my partners, because they they were awesome. I believe that they shared really, really good uh, ideas and strategies to, bueno, well, first of all, to try to achieve and follow uh, the worldwide to, talk, to tackle climate change. So first of all, thank you, thank you, and you, because I believe that you did a really, really very key uh, thing to, to, to get our ambitions as a global um, commitment. So first of all, we we discuss about that we are different countries, so we have different necessities, but we have to face this as a global ambitious. I believe that we could take these experiences as a status quo, as my partner says too, to uh, support us to get different strategies and get different experiences. And with that, we could change and implement different policies policies as net zero program that it, that it has a huge potential to bring uh, different stakeholders to common platform. So we could create a domino effect as um, 
global change and we could be a part of this change as a global ambitions. So that uh, it's real important too, because we have to collaborate as many uh, institutions, as many uh, organizations as we can, not only for government, we could collaborate between government, educational institutions, for example, increasing the budget from investigation in, in the education institution. And we have to be part of, uh, of all the sectors like uh, children, uh, like um, in an older uh, maybe group, uh, we can uh, implement some different strategies as science communication to bring all the all the all the all, all the necessities that we have to hear them as you say and I believe that it's a compliment for all that my partners say also to hear is that we have to collaborate with different perspectives and points of view to change what we have to to do a science communication and to uh, face different uh, complications that we have, like uh, COVID-19, right? So we have to face to economy, to change our minds, to increase budget in investigation, and to make and implement technologies as best as we can to uh, change our, our kind of, of implement and do things with industry for point zero, for example, too. So we have to achieve the best uh, technologies too, to change our minds and to uh, empower our youth to make some and many uh, important decisions in government, in educational institutions and in social media too. Thank you so much, Samantha. It's also a very important message and it's also a very important talk that you had. And we take everything what you said now and the same for Kishra and for um, who gave us the first uh, group. Sorry, remember me? Re remind me, uh, Nahid, who was in charge of the first? Mahia. Mahia. Oh, Mahia. Mahia. Thank you. All of you, please send us really a brief note. I know that we are recording this session, but it's very important to get in a very brief note the most important things that you are thinking, that you focus, that you think should be the, the crucial uh, solution or the crucial action that you're going to have. And uh, that will be very, very good for everyone. And I invite you uh, to keep in touch this group of youth leaders that today were working in these breakout rooms in order to help as a big pop family all together working and all together sharing and helping each other. Thank you so very much. And now I will ask uh, Vanessa if we have uh, some questions or we don't have too much time. What do you mean? What do you think, uh, Vanessa, please? I think we can um, go for the final comments of Dr. Ash so we can okay. have a break. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. If uh, you had some questions and you sent it to, you drop it down in the, in the chat, we will answer you. I'm sure if you leave us your email, if we are not, uh, you are not in the pop family, you are visiting us, we, we will send you the, the web page and the link to send us your messages, please. Thank you so much and your questions. Well, now it's my pleasure to give the floor again to Dr. Ash Pachori to give us the final comments after he was listening all your presentations or your projects or your ideas or your work and, and so on. And yeah, facing the situation, please, Dr. Ash, can you give us your message and your final comments about this session, please? Thank you. I mean, my final comments are really to underscore all the messages you've shared. Um, and it's, it's, inc it's incredible that in a matter of a few minutes, uh, the collective thinking that has emerged from these discussions and your presentations, um, you know, are, are so uh, clear and very, very uh, tangible and operational. And I just want to say this is one indication among many of the potential that young people offer uh, the world, um, you know, to, to not only uh, not only take action, but turn direction, which we ever we need 
uh, you know, with ever greater urgency today. And I just want to say that, you know, all of you have come up with, you've all made incredible presentations about your projects. Um, I found the I found the, the quizzes very interactive and fun, but very, very informative. I mean, it was just brilliant. Uh, and I agree with the ideas that you've shared, you know, just activities like this that bring us together, you know, the, the, the thinking and then um, the, the inspiration that comes with all the action that each one of us takes um, uh, is so precious. And I, I, I do, do, do want to sort of recognize and acknowledge uh, your, your point about the importance of these, these initiatives. But I also want to say that you have underscored, and I only want to sort of reiterate that each one of us has the ca capability of taking action in our individual lives uh, and, and you know, in our homes, in our communities, and, and it counts. So I just want to say that, you know, we all have a role to play and indeed you're right. We are the last generation, but we are the ones who are affected the most. And in fact, uh, I don't know if uh, you're aware of this, but uh, the, the, the recent science, which, which was published just a couple of days ago, said that, you know, particularly, and you've, you've underscored this point also, those that are in developing um, economies, are going to uh, face almost twice as many extreme and intense weather events than those in a developed economy. So, you know, I just wanna say that, you know, there, there is a vulnerability addressing community needs, carrying everyone with us, being inclusive in our responses. These are really important approaches for us to adopt and keep close to our hearts in everything we do. And, um, uh, and, and therefore, um, I just want to say that, you know, many of you talked about engaging the community. I know a lot of your projects are focused on exactly that. And one of the key aspects of the sustainable development goals has been to take everyone with us and leave no one behind. And so let's keep that you know, principle um, absolutely front and center in the action that we take. All of you magnify the potential of young people, uh, the importance of your voices. Thank you for amplifying your voices and sharing your experiences. Let's keep moving forward. That's all I want to say. Yes, it is definitely, um, you know, a stark message, which um, I hope will serve as a wake up call. But I also want to say the impacts of uh, climate change. Are, are going to mean many more, um, you know, I know, I know it, to, 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 this is not something that I need to say to all of you, but for anybody else who's listening, you know, you may say, hey, what's the difference between 1.5 degrees and 2 degrees or 2 and 2.9 or 3 degrees is huge. That was the difference between the, the ice age and, and, you know, our, our transition out of the ice age was a matter of three or three degrees or something like that. So I just want to say that, uh, you know, it, you know, every point um, makes a difference in terms of temperature increase. Uh, we have the capacity to address this issue and the importance is in taking action now and, and addressing it urgently. So thank you all. I want to say, Movimiento! Movimiento! One more time, guys. <laughs> Movimiento! Congratulations to all of you. Uh, we've got lots to do. We will continue to work together. Let's do it as we bring our minds, our hearts, our souls, and our hands together in making this happen. So my heartiest congratulations. Thank you all to those of you, every one of you who's made this happen here. Thank you to... Um, the Youth for Climate um, group for giving us this incredible opportunity to contribute to the COP, the pre-COP, and the voices of youth. That's what we believe in. We believe in you. Thank you. And one more time, Movimiento! Oh! 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 Thank you all. And all my love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. See you soon. Bye. Abrazos. Abrazos. Adiós. The picture. The picture. The picture. The picture. <laughs> Here goes again. Movie me and you. Oh. 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 oh.
Put it her. Can you please turn your cameras on so we can take All the right, picture? Let's do this. And put it her. Yeah. Yes, let's yeah, get the heart in the screen here. In the heart. Yeah. Everyone smile. All right. Okay, Anna is joining the session. Okay, let's be yeah, Anna. Okay. Guys. Again. Okay, let's have another one. Okay, please let me get smile, that everyone. Movimiento. Oh. 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 God bless you guys. Have a beautiful day, Thank everybody. You, have a blessed Bye. and happy day. Keep shining. Thank you, everyone. Hi, Thank everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 See you guys. Thank you, <laughs> well, it's a nice day. Bye. Bye. You too. Bye. 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 Thank you. you need to stop the streaming. Thank you. See you. Yeah, can see we? You, Alejandro. Can we stop?